of the fathers who went out maybe on a Saturday night, <laughs> indulged a little, a bit too much. 109 would house them under the town hall. They have cells. That's where you used to get locked up. Well, they would let them sleep it off in there. And then they would wake them up and get them out early, early Sunday morning. Because they had to get home because everyone went to church as a family unit. And that was very important. Going to church as a family unit. No matter what, what, what your religion was, you went, to church, you went as a family unit. And um, if you spent the night somewhere and your parents weren't, weren't going to pick you up until maybe Sunday night or whatever, like some of my friends were Jewish, so I was at the <laughs> temple with them. Some of my friends, I was raised Catholic. St. Michael's is my, uh, is my church. That's my parish. I've been there ever since I was about eight years old. And um, I made communion. Uh, they call it the reconciliation now, but it was penance, you know, confession. Um, and then, of course, confirmation when I was, uh, I think it was 13 or 14 when I made confirmation. And, um, and I was the first group, first group, I was a member of the first group to make confirmation in what the church, is, where the church is now for St. Michael's, because that's the second church. The first church was struck by lightning. And the uh, Corps of, City Corps of Engineers said it wasn't safe enough, so they put it down. So where you see the fruit stand over there on, on Union Street and um, 41st Avenue, and all those stores going all the way back to King, to the, um, well, it used to be Knights of Columbus, that big building. It's a Chinese um, church. They've been in and out for years. But all the way back up to that was property of St. Michael's. Nobody knows that at Flushing High, it was made like a campus. So we students used to sit out on the grass, study when it was hot, stuff like that. So it, it, there was a lot of good things, like I said, throughout Flushing that we did. The bicycle, the, the track, the bike track, still there. I used to ride my bike up there. Now I say to myself, oh my gosh, how did I do that? You know what I mean? Because it, like, it looks like it's round when you just look at it, but it's slant. So you, you could be here and the next person is up, is up above you. You know how track is. And um, I used to ride that, oh man, twice, sometimes two or three times a week. I mean, that, that was the bomb. You was there for that. And then, of course, um, I used to run track. So it, it, this area, it, it, uh, kids stayed, the youth stayed very busy with athletics. Now, most of the teenagers, we, we used to be able to hang out at Laurels. Uh, uh, and we also had a family-owned, uh, my friend John, his parents owned the um, ice cream parlor. So the only one. So we, you know what I mean? So it was always a family fair. We always had some place to go. Everybody looked out for everybody. And everybody looked out for the kids. So there's no, it's not unusual for me to look out for the kids because I grew up here looking out for the kids. And nobody cared. If, if, if mother worked, hey, we knew your mom, moms was at work. My mom's at work. Hey, we better look out for one another. If we went to the big park and the little kid, you was a little kid and you was there, didn't matter your nationality. We had to look out for you. Because if, if we didn't look out for you, then we got beat up by the adults. So... And it was just one thing, and that is the 
slogan you get where it takes a village to raise a child. You see what I'm saying? If a, if, if a kid was in the street too long, what's the matter? You, you haven't gone home for lunch like in the summertime? You, you, you haven't gone home then? Well, my mom is work. Well, heck, come on in. You got to eat. All right? Got to get you off the street a little bit. And even if you said, kids said, well, I'm not allowed it, they brought the food to you. 